Hello, my name is Damien Lemoyne. Uh, I work with Western Digital Research, and my talk is about command duration limits feature support in Linux. The outline of this presentation is we'll first go through uh, some typical uh, hard disk performance characteristics regarding performance and high latency, and how um, users of hard drives can control uh, this high latency using two different methods. Uh, based on QDAPs and using the AT and CQ priority feature. We'll then uh, move on to um, presenting details about the new command duration limits feature and its integration within the Linux kernel, uh, present some uh, experimental results, and conclude this presentation. So first, uh, hard disk performance and IO latency. Uh, so the typical uh, hard disk performance characteristic curves are like shown here for a 128 kilobyte random read workload. As the drive is accessed at a higher Q depth, we can see that uh, performance moves from uh, 81 IO per second at Q depth one up to 188 IO per second at Q depth 32 for this workload. So more than double the performance by uh, increasing the QLAPs. However, this higher performance comes at the cost of a higher average and day latency for uh, the commands executed. You can see that at QLAPs 1, while the, um, both the tail and average latency are about 20 milliseconds, this, the tail latency increases up to over 550 milliseconds at the highest QLAPs of 32. And this higher uh, latency um, can be a problem for, for users. And so controlling latency is an important aspect of many storage applications. Uh, this allows to implement different user service level, also providing warranty of service, quality of service for uh, the application and the users of these applications. But this is also an important factor in terms of uh, the overall system performance. Typical example here is for RAID or erasure coded system, where a single user IO is split uh, into fragments uh, distributed to multiple drives. In this case, the slowest IO, uh, the slowest completion time for uh, any of these fragments will determine the entire uh, user IO execution time. So controlling IO latency for each drive so that all fragments co uh, complete within the same time frame is important to achieve uh, user uh, guarantee of service. There are mainly two uh, methods um, that exist today for controlling IO latency at the device level. The first one is based on uh, QDEPS limits. Uh, in this case, this is really a trade-off between performance. Uh, we trade off performance for tight control over IO latency. And the other uh, method that is uh, quite widely used today, it, it relies on the NTA NCQ priority feature. With this feature, um, a user can give hints to the drive to achieve a partial best effort control uh, over IO latency uh, with higher performance. Uh, the main point of this presentation today is the new command duration limits feature, which is an even more advanced interface that is being uh, defined today. Uh, and this interface allows users to precisely control high latency within a high performance uh, settings. This is done by providing more uh, detailed hints to the drive to, uh, to allow the drive uh, to implement an efficient and very precise on-time command execution. So uh, as background, let's first look at the uh, commonly uh, used method for controlling high latency today. The first one being a QDAP space control. So this uh, method uh, relies on the fact that at the low Q depths, uh, average and tail latency uh, are um, very low too. Uh, so for our um, baseline uh, workload example of a random read, a 128 kilobyte random read workload, we can see here that at Q depths three, 
our tail latency is with, uh, within 100 milliseconds. Um, so by accessing the drive with this limited QDAPs of three, one can uh, uh, ensure that all IOs are completed within 100 milliseconds. However, this comes uh, at the cost of a much lower um, performance overall for the drive. As we can see here, the best that can be achieved is 110 IO per second, which is a 40% decrease over the maximum uh, achieved uh, 188 IO per second at QDAPS32. This is a very simple and efficient method in terms of IO latency, but it, it is um, it degrades uh, uh, performance. Uh, despite that, it is widely used today, uh, and the the main its main problem uh, and why uh, users try to move away from it is that uh, in order to increase the overall uh, system performance. Uh, one needs more drives, which increases the system cost. So the uh, second uh, method that exists today for controlling our latency is ATA, the ATA NCQ priority feature. So this feature was first introduced with SES2 uh, 10 years ago. This is an ATA only feature that has no SCSI equivalent. There is no uh, command priority defined uh, with uh, SCSI read and write commands. And what the NTA NCQ uh, priority feature defines uh, essentially is a high priority bit or high priority level for the uh, um, NCQ FPDMA read and write commands. In addition, of course, to the normal or no priority level uh, that, um, that is implicitly defined if one doesn't use this feature. Uh, the main problem though uh, it, with this feature is that um, the standard is very vague about uh, how quickly high priority commands should be executed by the disk. The, the standard do not define any specific command execution scaling policy. And this can lead to different uh, behavior uh, in terms of how latency for different uh, drive vendors and different drive models. This is the, the uh, latency characteristic that will be achieved by four high priority uh, uh, commands uh, completely depends on the drive firmware implementation. So this feature in Linux is supported since uh, kernel 4.10. Uh, the support relies on Linux, Linux IO priority uh, interface, uh, which is itself much older than uh, kernel 4.10. Uh, this uh, interface was initially defined for uh, the kernel block IO schedulers so that uh, the scheduler can, uh, from the host, uh, implement a similar uh, um, device level uh, feature as, as ATNC priority does. What this interface has is three different priority classes, uh, real time, best effort, and idle the name being uh, very self-descriptive descriptive here. And the NCQ high priority level for commands maps to uh, the real-time priority class. Any IO that belongs to this priority class will have uh, its commands marked as uh, NCQ high priority. And uh, how the user can do that is um, by assigning uh, priorities to its IOs. This can be done for all application of the users per process group or per process using the IO per set system call, or this can be on, uh, done on a per IO basis for asynchronous IOs with uh, libIO and IO Uring, Uring uh, using the uh, AIO rec prio field of the struct uh, AIO CD. Uh, once the user defined priorities for its IOs, uh, the kernel will propagate that information to the block IO scheduler down to the device driver so that commands can be marked with the high priority uh, bit or not. Let's look at one example of ATN CQ priority use. And in this example, we reuse our 128 kilobyte random read workload but 20% uh, of the IOs in this case are uh, marked as high priority. And we, as what we can see is that 
all these 20% uh, hyper-TIO complete very quickly within uh, 50 millisecond uh, tail latency. So most IOs actually com complete even um, more quickly than that, um, quicker than that. Uh, 50 millisecond is the word, uh, 99th IO latency percentile. Uh, however, this comes at the cost of a much uh, higher tendency for uh, low or normal priority commands. All the 80% of commands that do not have a priority uh, becomes much slower. Uh, overall, in terms of performance, there is an 18% uh, decrease in the maximum uh, IO rate observed at the uh, highest Q-depth of 32. Uh, with NCQ priority, we're down here at 126 uh, IO per second uh, from the uh, maximum of 188 achieved without using the feature. Let's move on now to uh, command duration limits. So this uh, uh, new feature is currently being drafted uh, in T10 SPC6 for SCSI and uh, SCS5 for ATA with the T13 committee. A simpler version of the commendation limit is already defined in T10 SPC5, uh, but today's talk is about the newer version that uh, defines um, the same interface for both uh, SCSI and ATA. What command duration limit uh, defines is a set of seven uh, duration limit descriptors for read commands and seven descriptors for the write commands. Uh, the limits here uh, mean that uh, the user can specify um, latency limits on read and write commands. Uh, and seven such limits can be, uh, different limits can be uh, defined for each command type. These limits can be accessed with a log page um, for ATA and a two different mode page for SCSI. In addition to these descriptors, three bits are added to the read and write command uh, control blocks. Uh, these three bits are used to indicate to the disk the duration limit descriptor to apply to the command. And descriptor zero here means no limit. So uh, like today, these three bits are zero, so meaning no limit. And one to seven point to the uh, one of the seven descriptors for each command type, read or write. Uh, unlike uh, ATA and CQ, though, the interesting uh, uh, characteristics of this feature is that the user can change the duration limit descriptors. This is not something that is fixed by the drive. Uh, using a mod select for SCSI or a write log um, DMA for ATA, the user can uh, change the values of the limits for the seven descriptors for read and write commands. And this is very interesting uh, uh, for the user since uh, this allows to unify the behavior in terms of latency for different drive models from different drive vendors. And that can mitigate the latency characteristic variation for uh, a system that uses uh, different drives. The command duration limit descriptors uh, define three different types of limits and the policy for each limit. And the policy here uh, means, uh, defines what the drive should do if uh, during a command execution, uh, the limit uh, associated to the policy is exceeded. So the three limits that exist are, are uh, the command duration guideline, which is the maximum overall command execution time target that the user uh, wants. So this is uh, the, the target uh, maximum latency desired. Uh, the second limit is the maximum inactive time, which defines a limit on the time a command can spend waiting for execution within the drive queue. And the third limit is the maximum active time, which defines a limit on the amount of time the drive can spend accessing the media to uh, execute the command. So this is very interesting to limit uh, the media access retries uh, if, for example, a read command is uh, hitting a bad sector. And at least one of these limits must be uh, a non-zero value 
for the descriptor to be valid. If all limits are zero, the descriptor is, is considered to be a no limit descriptor. The policies that can be um, uh, associated with each limit uh, are as follows. There are five of them. The first one is best effort. Uh, with this policy, the, the device tries to complete the command uh, at the earliest possible time, consistent with the uh, limit value. This policy does not uh, generate any error if the limit is exceeded. The second policy, uh, I call it continue limited. And with this policy, if the limit uh, is exceeded, the command uh, execution will continue, but using the next valid descriptor in the list of seven descriptors for, for the command type at hand. The third policy that exists is continue without a limit. Uh, similar to the previous one, if the limit is exceeded, the command uh, execution continues, but this time without a limit. The fourth one is uh, what I, we can call, qualify as a soft abort. Uh, with this complete policy, if the limit is exceeded, the command will be immediately completed, but with a good status. Uh, with the additional sense code indicating that are currently unavailable. So this is kind of a fast fail, a timeout error for the command. But since the completion is a good status, not an actual error, this uh, allows uh, the user to specify that uh, commands with these policies have to be aborted, but without aborting the entire um, uh, queue of commands in the case of AT and CQ. The final uh, policy is a hard abort, which will uh, abort the uh, a, a command if the value, uh, the limit uh, value is exceeded during the processing of the command. And this is an abort with an error, aborted command uh, with command timeout during processing uh, sense code. This is again a fast fail of the command in if the limit is exceeded. So how we integrated this uh, feature in Linux, uh, similarly to uh, ATNCQ, we uh, again use the Linux IO Priority API. So we uh, can reuse the same per context and also per asynchronous IO controls uh, for the user to specify uh, duration limits. Uh, how we do that is by um, introducing a new priority class uh, called IO Prior Class DL as shown here. Uh, and for that class, the priority level, we have up to eight uh, different levels that we can use. Uh, the priority level directly indicates the number of the uh, descriptor, the limit descriptor to apply for these IOs. Uh, using this information, the uh, device driver can set the uh, descriptor bits, the LD bits, the three bits for read and write commands. Modification uh, of the kernel uh, are mostly at the SCSI disk driver and libatl level, so that uh, read and write commands have their DLDB sets. If the command uh, is for an IO that belongs to the uh, duration limit class, we also have changes for uh, discovering support uh, for the the feature for the drive. So looking at the log page, etc. And there is also some changes so that uh, the, the descriptor currently uh, defined for the drive are advertised to the user through CFS. User application can then automatically choose using this information, looking at these, these CFS attributes files, uh, choose the best descriptor for a particular IO. So we have an example here of this uh, CFS structure. Uh, exposed to the user. So each are uh, files that can be read and uh, uh, the values uh, for, for example, the duration guideline and its associated policy can be inspected by an application. So we have seven descriptor for read commands and seven descriptor for write commands uh, exposed uh, here through CFS. So all of this was implemented uh, in kernel uh, 5.14 stable. Uh, the experiments uh, are based uh, on um, the latest FIO version, which is uh, uh, modified um, to accept 
specifying this new uh, duration limit priority class. Uh, specifying this class can be done per job, uh, so per process, using the prior class and prior option, or can be done also for uh, uh, per asynchronous I.O. for the libio or I.O. Uring I.O. engines using the CMD prior percentage, CMD prior class, and CMD prior options. So let's look at a uh, first example of command duration limits used here. And this first example uh, is similar to the uh, previous NCQ priority uh, example, where we set 20% of our commands for the 128 kilobat random read workload with a very short 30 millisecond duration guideline and best effort policy descriptor. And as we can see here, the results achieved are very similar to uh, what NCQ priority uh, gives, which is that the 20% of uh, IOs that have a short, a short duration guideline complete very quickly. The tail latency, um, 99th percentile of IO latency is within 50 milliseconds for all IO. However, uh, compared to uh, the NCQ priority, what we can see is that we have a much better behavior uh, for the tail latency of the no limit commands. So the, for the NCQ priority case, that will be the low priority uh, commands. And we see that we, uh, we, get, we get a much lower tail latency, even lower than the baseline where no priority or no limits are uh, used. Similarly to NCQ, we also see that this uh, time-based scheduling uh, of commands, execution of commands by the drive comes at the cost of a small uh, a drop in IOPS, uh, again, similar to uh, the NCQ case, NCQ priority case. So now, unlike um, NCQ IO priority, with command duration limits, we're not limited to a single type of information, which is high versus normal. We can uh, use at the same time different uh, limit descriptors for different set of files within the workload. So in this example, for example, we have 10% of IOs with a short 100 millisecond limit and 20% uh, of IOs with a longer 20 millisecond limit. And um, as we can see here with our latency, the 200 millisecond uh, commands, all uh, the tail latency for these commands is all within 20 millisecond and very similar for the 100 millisecond uh, uh, command, limited command, with just a slight uh, overshoot here at the highest skew depths, uh, slightly over 100 millisecond. Again, we see uh, a small drop in our IOPS, but it's actually overall a better IOPS than before with both our uh, previous C, uh, command duration limit example or NCQR priority, since we give to the drive more time to uh, execute these urgent IOs. We define an explicit limit of 100 milliseconds, which allows a better reordering of the commands uh, being executed uh, at the drive level, uh, which gives us better IOPS. We can see here this, also comparing uh, our latency with the uh, command duration limits for this uh, use case with NCQ priority, where we have now 30% of IOs with a high priority. So NCQ priority does its job. The high priority commands complete very quickly, but we again see a much higher uh, tail latency for the low priority commands, which is much worse than what uh, command duration limits gives us. Also, you will notice that uh, the tail latency for high priority uh, uh, IOs uh, goes up to 150 milliseconds, which would not satisfy the user requirements of a 100 millisecond limit for this 10% of IOs uh, for this particular use case. We also do get a much better uh, IOPS with command duration limits, 165 against 159 for NCQ priority. So we can further uh, also uh, 
use a defined complex, the user can define uh, more complex workloads with uh, granulation limits. Again, we have up to seven descriptors that we can use as uh, mutual slit to def define different limits for uh, different sets of commands. In this case, uh, we have a four service level uh, workload, 10% of uh, commands limited at 100 millisecond, 10% at 200 millisecond, 20% at 300 millisecond, and the remaining 60% without any limit. And we can see the results here, 300 millisecond all complete within the desired limit, same for the 200 millisecond one, uh, almost uh, all okay for 100 millisecond with a slight uh, uh, increase for the highest QDEPs over uh, slightly over 100 millisecond here. Doing something similar with uh, NCQ priority with 40% of high priority uh, commands, we can see again that we do get uh, a low priority overall for this 40% of commands, but at an even worse uh, tendency for low priority commands, which is something that does not happen with command duration limits. Even the no limit command here uh, behave very nicely and give uh, and we get a tail C that is even lower than our uh, baseline without any priority or limit. Conclusion. Command duration limits uh, we've seen is much more flexible than the NTA uh, NCQ priority feature. Uh, we have up to seven uh, different uh, limit descriptors that can be used uh, to define uh, work uh, limits on, on IOs for a particular workload, seven for reads, seven for writes. That is uh, much, uh, a much more flexible um, setup for the user to, uh, to, um, to take advantage of compared to the single high versus low uh, differentiation that NCQ priority gives. Uh, this also allows the user to precisely define uh, a behavior for different drives. Uh, whereas at ATN CQ priority, really the behavior depends on how the drive firmware implements the feature. Uh, for command duration limits, the drive has to follow the duration limit descriptors that the user sets. Also, uh, in terms of uh, Linux integration, Reusing the Linux IO um, priority API simplifies application migra migration from the NCQ priority uh, feature. It is the same API. We only need to use different uh, priority uh, values, priority class and levels. So going further, uh, deeper integration of command duration limits within Linux can further improve results. In particular, uh, IO schedulers and also C groups with the uh, latency controller could take advantage of current duration limits to uh, better serve um, heavy workloads that require um, queuing at the host level. Um, currently, this work is still pending. Uh, it is based on uh, uh, draft specifications that are being uh, worked on T10 and T13. And we first need completion of this. Uh, uh, specification work for uh, this um, all this code to be uh, submitted upstream as a release candidate. And thank you for your attention and for joining this session. <laughs>